Hey garden friends, what is up? So it has been quite a while since I have gotten on camera. Um, I think it's been like two weeks since I filmed a video. I have just had a little bit of a leave of absence. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that and the main one is menstruation. This garden tour is going to be the epitome of 2020. It's going to be the embodiment of what 2020 was for all of us because, as I had said, unfortunately, <laughs> the past few weeks have been really stressful. I normally am okay during that time of the month, but um, unfortunately there were some other things that were really stressing me out in my personal life, in my job, in uh, my relationships, and I don't know if you guys can relate to that, but sometimes things just go to the wayside, including my goals, including my hopes and dreams, including pretty much everything that is important to me, and that includes the garden. <laughs> but I'm feeling a little bit better today. I'm still in my workout clothes, um, but I figured I would just go ahead and throw some shoes on and take you guys outside to show you what the garden looks like right now. I'm not too worried about it. It does need quite a bit of work to get to a good place to start planting for fall. Um, but I have started seeds already for fall, which I'm super excited about. And so those have to go into the ground soon. Um, yeah, and I'm really excited just to get past summer. I know that, that sounds really crazy because <laughs> why would we wish away the garden season? But I don't know if you guys are like me, but I just feel like this whole year has been too much. It's just been too much for my mental health, okay? Anyway, so let's go ahead and throw on a pair of shoes and I'll take you guys outside. Um, so I just want to let you guys know it is midday. I'm taking you guys out um, in super bright and cold light. It's not really the ideal time, but I just figured if I'm going to film it, I need to film it now. So let's go ahead and show you guys what everything looks like. I want you to know that this is going to be a super relatable tour. It has weeds. It has uh, a lot of powdery mildew on all kinds of things. I'm struggling with a lot of different, ugh, it's just, honestly, I'm just sitting here making excuses for you guys, but genuinely it has been a rough year. I kept thinking as it continued to rain and rain and rain in my region that I was like, that's great, I don't have drip um, in my garden, so I was like, I don't have to water and it's gonna be super good for my water bill. But let me tell you, the molds, have really taken a havoc on my garden. I have black mold on my roses. I have white powdery mildew on a lot of my plants. So yeah, that's fine. It's totally okay, right? <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and head outside. Y'all, look at how many tomatoes that I have. This isn't even all of them. There are more over here as well. More tomatoes, more red peppers. And that's not all of them. There are more to harvest that I just have not gotten around to getting. Okay, numero uno, let's go ahead and start in the sunflower garden that I have thus dubbed it since I am no longer growing wildflowers out here. Although I guess sunflowers could be considered wildflowers. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys an update. It looks pretty good actually. So this is what it looks like. I think it looks pretty good. They're getting big. Um, so let's see, this row right here that you guys see, this is the sunshine sunflowers and you can see actually they're already starting to form little buds here. These here in the back are not as much. <gasps> little caterpillars. Oh, the devil. Um, these are mammoth sunflowers here in the back. These will get 12 feet tall. I'm gonna go ahead and take him off. Come on off. Come off, you little booger. These are mammoth sunflowers. So moon, oh, I'm sorry, not sunshine. Moonshine sunflowers right here. Ignore the background noise, but here in the back are Mrs. Mars sunflowers. These are the biggest ones for whatever reason, but there's one, da, 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 da. They're all down this way. And then these here in the front are the Shanti hybrid and they are getting eaten up a little bit. So I probably need to go ahead and do something about that. I also have a couple of um, white zinnias sown here that need to be thinned pretty desperately. 
Um, and of course the whole garden bed needs to be weeded. Um, these are my uh, blue mirror delphiniums and they are starting to die off and I'm not sure. They're probably just like literally dying, <laughs> um, but they also may just be like done for the season. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I mean, they're probably dying. And then I've got over here in this mix, a dahlia that has still not bloomed yet, but he's putting out little buds. So we'll see what ends up happening. Maybe he'll still bloom a little bit. Um, we've got some Dusty Miller here that hasn't grown a ton since I planted it. And honestly, like I said, I have not been attending the garden. So there are tons of weeds choking them out and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I'm not too like mad at it, I guess, because it's not its fault. It's definitely my fault. My banana cream Shasta daisies are also looking a little worse for wear, but they did put out a couple blooms for me just like a week ago, um, like just one or two. So I don't know what's gonna happen with these guys, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to come in here um, maybe this weekend and try to do some tidying up. My uh, Dianthus is starting to do a couple more blooms, but it's still looking pretty crispy. I also have an Echinacea here that is looking really worse for wear. Um, I'm not 100% sure what's wrong with it, but if you guys can see, there is some kind of something going on with it. And I've seen, I actually see this on almost all of my echinaceas. So if you guys can tell me why this modeling is happening of the leaves, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but the yellow and why, I don't know. I'm sure this is caterpillars, but if you guys can tell me what that is and how to treat it, that would be awesome. Cause I have no idea. The only things that actually seem to be doing super well in this bed are actually my um, Gara. I can't remember exactly what type of Gara this is, but they have like doubled in size and they are flushing out with buds. Let me see if it'll focus. They're flushing out with buds. So I think that they're gonna give me another round of blooms here in a little bit, which is super exciting. So yeah, let's go ahead and move on over here. Here is my David Austin rose that is looking really pathetic. I still cannot find my pruners. I have no idea what happened to them. So I need to get out here and uh, prune these pretty bad. Um, but it is still flushing out with some really pretty blooms. There's one, I'm trying to think. But like I said, I think this is black spot or black mold. Um, and I have sprayed it a couple of times, but I have not been consistent with it. So it's really suffering. And the underplantings are not looking that great either. Um, they are still blooming a little bit. I cut them back some, um, but they've gotten super, super crispy. And I think that it's just because they had a ton of water for a little bit and now it has dried out and I haven't been watering them. So I probably need to go ahead and come out here and give them a little bit of fertilizer and water them really well, but it is what it is. Um, like I said, I'm probably gonna go ahead and tear up all those underplantings and plant new stuff for fall. I have a really good idea. Uh, well, I won't know. I don't know if it's a really good idea, but I really wanna plant some mums over there and stuff like that. So yeah, that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing over here. I'll probably also plant um, some like red giant mustard beside the rose bush, which would be really fun, I think. Okay, moving on to the front garden bed. This garden bed is actually the only one, like this one I'm about to show you, is the only one that's doing probably the best out of all of my garden beds. Okay, so as you can see, the impatiens look beautiful. The coral impatiens, sunset coral, I believe. But they do have this crispiness. And I don't know what's going on, honestly, with all of that. Um, but it's not as bad over here as it is in the other garden bed on that side. Um, but like I said, the modeling is happening over here with this echinacea too. It's not as bad. So I'm not 100% sure what's going on. It looks actually, that looks like a fungus, 100%. So this probably all needs to be sprayed down. So I'll probably come out here and do that tonight. I'm gonna try to get back on track getting all of these things rehabbed a little bit. Um, my coleus is looking really pretty. It's actually put out these blooms, which I thought were really cool. They're this like deep royal purple, which is really fun. And then the Main Street coleus looks amazing. I mean, he was like two leaves just a second ago. So I'm really excited about him. And like this little, that's the only thing that's making me happy right now. 
these little things are the only things in my garden <laughs> that are making me happy. <laughs> The front of the garden bed still hasn't quite bounced back to back a little bit, um, but I think a lot of that is just because of the irregular watering schedule. Um, but it's coming back, you know, it'll bounce back. It needs to be weeded really bad um, and things need to be pulled out and all that good stuff. So we'll see what happens if they don't bounce back. I'll give them another couple weeks and I'll try to be more consistent with their watering. But if they the petunias don't bounce back, I'm probably going to just rip them out and put some pansies in there or something like that. Who knows? but I'm not too worried about it. I think the petunias will do what they need to do. Moving on to the baskets. This is what the baskets look like. As you can see, they really need to be trimmed up and I probably could just go ahead and take this whole zinnia out. Um, but this is what the petunia I put in here looks like. So he's doing pretty good. The other one looks better, but I'll show you that in a second. The dahlia is looking really good and it has a couple of buds coming out here. So I think that's gonna be really pretty. The geranium is doing amazing. He's loving his new spot and putting out a lot of new blooms for me. So I'm really happy with him. So it looks pretty good. I mean, other than the zinnia, but. <laughs> This is what the other side looks like though. How crazy is this petunia? He bounced back like insanely well. The zinnia in the middle died because we had too much rain and it ended up getting too soaked through. But the geranium and the petunia are starting to merge together a little bit. I do wish I had a little bit of something like coming out, but that's okay. It's no big deal. Um, my euphorbia has completely taken over. It's pretty much just a pot full of euphorbia right now with a little bit of geranium in the back. The impatient is pretty much dead, um, but if you can see all of the creeping Jenny is looking great as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and give him a haircut soon and I'm probably gonna pop all of, I'm gonna really take all of this out except I think I'll leave the creeping Jenny, but I'm gonna pop all of this out. I'll probably put him in the landscape probably put the geranium in a pot and then I will go ahead and uh, do a fall planting as well. So I'm excited for that. Okay, moving to the other side. So this side looks okay. It doesn't look as bad as I was thinking it, what it would, um, but I'm still trying to decide about a couple of things of what I'm gonna do. Um, so let me go ahead and show you guys what I mean. Okay, so not much to show you over here. My, my firepower, Nandina, is doing okay. A uh, little Mondo grass here, some lavender. But over here, I don't know what to do. So these are really getting hard with hit hard with something. Um, I'm not sure what is causing all of these dead leaves and crunchiness um they're not doing too bad i might could honestly just cut them back and they'd be okay but i also have noticed that the same thing is happening with my bleeding hearts they're getting just a little crispy i would think that it was watering except they they've had a lot of water so maybe they're getting overwatered. i'm not 100 percent sure um this one is the worst looking one this impatient I don't know so we'll see what happens i might rip them out and just put fall stuff in here but this is a hydrangea that i got on clearance a couple of weeks ago for eight bucks and um he's doing okay but he had a um a fungus on him and i have been spraying him but it doesn't seem to be doing very much so what i might do is just go ahead and cut off the affected area and throw it away i was thinking about putting him here but i kind of realized that i'm not it actually doesn't really say what type he is it just says premium assorted blue so i'm not 100 percent sure how big he's gonna get so i think i might put him somewhere else i'm just not 100 percent sure where so I'm probably gonna go ahead and pot him up. So what I was thinking was to put the euphorbia, put the euphorbia over here. What do you guys think? Would that be okay? Would that work? Um, if I cut him back and then I planted him here in the middle, I think that would be a really cute bright spot. And then maybe I could put some mums, like maybe, or like the red mustard or something like that. So let me know in the comments, what do you guys think that I should put here in the front? Should I put the euphorbia? Should I put some mums? Uh, should I put like the rainbow chard and all the other stuff that I'm growing inside? Um, that would be really pretty for fall too. I also have that red giant mustard, which is like has purple foliage. 
So let me know, what do you think I should pop here in the front? Because I'm just, I just don't know. I'm not feeling the euphorbia, even though I love it. I love the euphorbia. And it can take full sun, so I think, I think, I think the euphorbia can take full sun, so I could always pop him in the side bed as well. So who knows, I might end up doing that. Let's go ahead and take a peek at my hydrangea. Okay, so this is the hydrangea. Has some really gorgeous blooms. Really, really pretty. Some are starting to brown a little bit and this one's completely gone. So I'll probably gonna, I need to come out here and snip some of these off and try to save them because now I've realized that they don't dry as well on the plant as they would if you do them in a vase, a vase, whatever you wanna call it. So there's quite a few that I need to come out here and try to see if I can salvage. Um, so yeah, but overall it's looking pretty good, I think, except for that one brown spot. I'm gonna go ahead and clip him off. But we do have still some new ones coming out, which I'm super excited about. Oh, this one doesn't have one coming up yet, but he's definitely getting big, for sure. Looking good. Over here is my day lilies. This is the corner garden. So these are the day lilies. I have a couple more popping up. Oh, I just scared a little butterfly. And then the gardenia has put on quite a bit of growth. You can see this is all new growth right here. So I'm super proud of him. He's been doing really, really well over here in this spot. Okay, and here is the container garden. So it looks like actually a couple things need to be watered. I hope that that is not because of uh, borers because we do have a really bad problem with squash borers I think is what they're called um, I had a really bad problem with that with my yellow squash and then we've also been having a trouble with powdery mildew as you guys can probably already see um, but good news is let's see if I can find him I already have a squash forming this is um, what was this called oh I can't remember now but let me see if I can give you guys a pretty good view without breaking them off. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. He's gotten really big. I'll go ahead and card the type of squash that he is on the screen so you guys can see that. Over here is the dark green zucchini and I don't have any zucchini growing yet. That's okay though. These all need to be watered. So I'm gonna water them as soon as I'm done with this video. Um, these are my black beans that I sprouted and they're doing pretty well. Oh look! Oh my gosh guys! I didn't even know I had that! Wow! That is so cool! Although some of the leaves are yellowing and I'm not 100% sure why. Um, they don't look like they have any powdery mildew. That's so exciting though. Look at that. Ugh! Oh my gosh I feel so accomplished. Like I've been super neglecting it and here he still is just pumping out produce. Over here is my giant, um, what, do you, what, are, what are these called? This is the big, big pumpkin that I have. So it's trailing all the way down here, guys. Look how far he's trailing. That's okay. I'm not mad about it. And as you can see, I need to snip him off. I don't think that squash bores are the problem. I think it's just the powdery mildew. So I need to go ahead and cut off all the affected leaves. Um, over here is the mini harvest pumpkins. Ooh, here he is. And there he is, you guys. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Here, I'll lift him up. Look at how beautiful. I am so excited about him. I'm just so proud of these little pumpkins. Oh my gosh, even if I only get one, I'm just very happy about it. I am very, very excited. So there's that one. That's the only one I have on the mini pumpkins right now. And then there's only one big pumpkin that I have found so far. And he is right there. Look at him. He's growing so big. I'm so proud of him. I mean, guys, this is all with neglect. All with neglect. So I have definitely not taken care of things. I have not done anything special. I have been plagued by insects. I have been plagued by the powdery mildew. So if any of you guys out there feel like you're not a good gardener or 
that's 100% how I am feeling right now. Just remember that plants don't care. Plants don't care. You know, they definitely do better. They do better with a little bit of attention. They do better when you make sure that they don't get infections and different things like that. But you can still grow stuff even if you're really bad at it. So don't give up. Do it anyway, despite yourself. Okay, we are starting to make our way down to the vegetable garden. The air conditioning unit is on, so I apologize for that. Um, so we're gonna make our way down there, and I just want you guys to know it looks really bad. It looks really bad, you guys. Um, so don't judge, don't judge. Hopefully this just makes you feel better about yourselves. <laughs> okay guys, here it is. This is what the vegetable garden looks like. Completely overgrown. Lots of things not looking very good. The basil looks bad. It's all bolted. I did not do my job and pinch it off before it bolted. Um, we've got some marigolds growing out of control. Um, but good news is we have lots of produce though, despite all of that. Lots of produce. Got one of these guys. Got lots of red peppers. Lots of tomatoes oh let me see if you guys can see lots of tomatoes that are ripe that need to be picked um the strawberries have just gotten completely out of control i haven't weeded them probably in two months so i don't even know what is under here to be honest i'm gonna weed this weekend and we'll see how everything is doing i probably need to tear some of these marigolds out they've done really well though so if you want something that's super low maintenance get some marigolds <laughs> okay moving on to where our cucumbers were there is just blank space which I am okay with I'm so happy about this blank space because I know that this is where fall stuff is gonna go in and I just feel like this is what I want I want <laughs> a do-over I don't want to think about how bad this season has turned out to be and just how crazy things have turned out. I just want to redo it. So I'm very excited about fall. Um, the purple basil is coming back with a vengeance. I cut him back pretty harsh when I took the cucumbers out because the cucumbers were really strangling him. Oh, and it smells so good still. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with him. Even this little teeny tiny stub who got super strangled is putting out new growth. So pretty happy about that. This is my squash plant as you can see i have tons of dust over here um this isn't seven dust this is diatomaceous earth little side story here i tried to get seven dust at a my local garden center and accidentally picked up seven like some kind of spray like a, a concentrate and i was so mad at myself for not reading the box further um so i used diatomaceous earth to see if that would help with the borers and it totally did so i've just been keeping that applied and it has still survived um, it is still dealing with powdery mildew, so I'm spraying for that pretty regularly. As you guys can see right here, I don't know if you can see very well since it's so bright, um, but I have gotten quite a few squashes from him and we'll see if he puts out any more. I don't think I see any right now. Yeah, but definitely a lot of blooms. So chock full, oh look, there's a little one growing right there. Fun, okay. So yeah, I did end up taking out the little thing, um, but I put this back in to kind of hold him upright a little bit because he flopped as soon as I took off the support that the trellis that I had previously. So yeah, over here, I ended up taking this out. I still need to pot up my chiffon um, Rose of Sharon, my, my pink chiffon. And I just put him over there because I needed to water him with the hose. And so I put him over there but all of the lobelia is looking real pretty. It's intermixed with lots of grass though, but look how pretty. It looks really cute. Even from a distance, it looks really, really cute. Like when I'm driving home, it still looks good. So I'm happy with it, even though I have not potted up the chiffon yet. Okay, moving on to the last bed. So the geranium over here is not doing well. He's still alive and he's putting out blooms, bless his heart. Um, but he really needs partial shade. It's getting, it's gotten way too hot for him to thrive, which is why he's so teeny. But on another note, the zinnias are great. They're getting super tall. Um, they're mostly orange, which 
I don't know why. Um, they were pink and all and like a deeper red color, but like none of those for whatever reason seem to be doing as well. It's covered in grass. I really need to come here and weed. But the um, sedum is doing okay. He looks a little bit worse for wear. Probably need to cut him back or something. Um, and it's probably just the clay soil too. But these are looking really pretty. Got some seed saving that I could do for sure. The salvia is still putting out blooms, so I'm pretty happy about that. It's definitely been a long-term um, bloomer for me, so I've been very happy about that. I think that he's been definitely holding his own. The coreopsis is doing really well as well. Uh, Rubecchia, always a winner, doing really good. Oh, this one's pink. So this one's got more pink blooms on him, but as you can see, we're dealing with some mold issues here too. Uh, so yeah, it's just been so wet, you guys, and then it went to insanely dry. Like this week, it has not rained at all. We've got our uh, red twig dogwood over here, some more coreopsis, more rubecchia, the salvia. The sunflowers were looking great, and then after getting so much rain, I think it really just did them in. I don't think that they particularly liked being so wet. Um, so they have not looked super good because of that. My sky pencil holly. This salvia is not doing super well because whenever I take the hose out, it always tears it up. And then the beard's tongue is doing okay, I guess. He's just hanging out, just chilling. Um, yeah, they've gotten a little smaller though. So I assume that that's probably a bad thing. They probably once again, didn't like being so wet. So the zinnias over here, one did die once again because it got a little too wet, but as you can see, it has self seeded right here. So we'll see what those end up doing. Um, but this one's doing pretty well and this one is doing pretty well as well. Um, they're still putting out nice blooms and they look pretty from the street. So I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, I definitely wouldn't say that this was like, my preferred, but you know, for a buck, that's right. So these were one dollar a piece. So for a two, for two dollars to fill that up, I think that's not too bad considering. And then my hanging baskets still have not gotten hung, but look at how crazy. Let me pick them up so you can see. But look at how amazing this Calibracoa has bounced back. How awesome! This is like the only guy I feel like who has done super well with all the water just gorgeous. This one is the one that I like to call the pink lemonade Calibracoa, just because that's what it reminds me of for whatever reason. Um, but he's bounced back really super well too. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. <sighs> okay guys, so I have bared my soul to you. I have showed you the garden that I didn't want to show you. The garden that I didn't want to have. <laughs> it's it's a little it's a little rough and you know but I've just come to the point I'm just trying to get better about accepting things and accepting the fact that I can't do everything that I can't have you know a crazy immaculate garden right now while I have a small kid and I work quite a bit and also trying to YouTube at the same time so I'm trying to kind of like give myself a little bit of grace and I hope that this that's the main thing I hope that you guys get from this garden tour is that sometimes we don't want to show our gardens to people and sometimes things don't exactly turn out the way that we like idealize them in our head or we fantasized that they would be um but that's okay you know and sometimes i think that it's important to share our struggles and our failures as well as our successes because hopefully this makes you feel like you're not alone and that you're not the only one who has sometimes not so great of a garden <laughs> So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please like and subscribe and check out my other videos and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Bye.